This is Prime 7 Local News with Madeleine Collignon, Kenny Hinckley and meteorologist Carl Linders with your local weather. Now, Prime 7 Local News at 6. Tonight, don't become a statistic. New South Wales Railways launch a new campaign to save lives. New trains coming for local lines, the XPT and Explorer fleet to be upgraded. The tradition continues at Dinner Plain as powerful dogs hit the trails. And rain increasing for your Tuesday. Your local weather forecast is coming up. Good evening. New South Wales Railways has launched a new campaign designed to save lives. And the message is simple, really. Play by the rules and you will survive. They've teamed it up with police to ensure pedestrians, passengers and drivers stay safe. At Central Station, parents and kids took a peek inside the world's most familiar locomotive. Well, Thomas is here to teach the children all about rail safety and how to, how to be safe around trains. This week is Rail Safety Week, an appropriate time to highlight a concerning fact. We're seeing some ad advertent stupid acts uh, by individuals. Many putting kids at risk. And our kids are so precious, we want to keep them safe. While this woman tried to rescue her child stuck in a lift, her pram careered onto the tracks, causing quite the stir. Yeah, it's always important to have your hand up with the strap because they just can get away so easily. Distraction has also led to some serious falls across the rail network, but in the regions the biggest problem is the level crossing. What we're seeing in the country is people getting onto train lines when they have no reason to be there. Uh, we've seen people disregard boom gates. These things will creep up on you and you won't hear them coming. And a 400 tonne train takes, you know, almost half a kilometre to stop. In all, there have been over 5,000 safety related incidents in the past year and many of them have been preventable. But it's hoped Thomas here will help people pay a little more attention and make smarter decisions. Stay off the tracks. These are dangerous places. Serena Nastasi, Prime 7 News. The entire regional train fleet is set to be replaced for the first time since hitting the tracks in 1982. 60 XPT, 23 Explorer and 28 Endeavour passenger trains are about to get a facelift. 19 locomotives will also be replaced. The entire fleet will be overhauled and it's been described by the Deputy Premier John Barillaro as one of the biggest investments in regional rail for decades. The number of people using regional train services has been falling for years, but new high-speed trains could change that. But they're a long way off yet. It won't happen until 2020. Police are appealing for help to locate a missing Albury man. 52-year-old Maurice Varg was last seen leaving a motel on Hume Street on the 1st of August. Mr Varg has not made contact with his family or accessed his bank account or mobile phone since disappearing. Police and his family are concerned for his welfare, confirming he suffers a number of medical conditions. Maurice is described as Caucasian with a slim build. He is about 165 centimetres tall with ginger-coloured hair and tattoos on his his upper arms. He was last seen with a full faced beard. Anyone with information is please urged to uh, contact Albury Police or Crime Stoppers on 1800 333 000. Vandals have damaged Albury's Munga Barina Reserve just weeks out from an Aboriginal celebration. It's believed four wheel drives were used to tear up the ground and ruin the site. Local Aboriginal community members have condemned the act, saying it's distressing not only to Aboriginal people but to everyone who visits the area. Anyone with information is urged to call Crime Stoppers. A local got a scare but escaped serious injury when his stock transporter overturned on the Walla Walla Road near Gerodgery earlier today. Several sheep were killed. Firefighters called in the Albury Hazmat unit to deal with the fuel spill. We have a small uh, diesel leak which we're attending to. Uh, it's not hurting the environment or anything so we're, we're quite lucky there. There's no drains it's running into. An independent review into energy retail markets has found Victorians are paying about 21% uh, per year more for their electricity than the cheapest offer available on the market. Local welfare services say many have been forced to turn off their heating this winter just to pay the bills. 
Since 2000, electricity and gas prices for Victorian households have risen by almost 200%. It's left many feeling a pinch, while welfare support organisations such as Uniting Wodonga are seeing more and more people who need help to pay bills. We have um, around about 30 people a day come through. And like I said, every second person is actually saying that the increased bills um, have impacted on them financially. For some, the power bill surge has become so bad they've been forced to take extreme measures just to get by. People are turning off their electricity at the main so that they're not getting um, high bills. But the Australian Energy Council says the re-regulation of energy prices is definitely not the answer. If the price is re-regulated in the way contemplated by this report, we would end up with a, uh, a price that is, makes it very difficult for retailers to compete in the market. And it wouldn't protect households from rising costs. Uh, the reason prices are high in Victoria in particular are because of issues in the wholesale market and until government is able to deal to those issues and investment in wholesale generation can begin, we won't see any downward pressure on retail prices. While some steps have been welcomed, such as greater transparency, it's clear there's a lot more work ahead. It's vital. This is everyday living. Josh Ribrich, Prime 7 News. The backers of a campaign to establish a museum in Wodonga have been told to raise a million dollars themselves. Why is that and can they do it? Wodonga has a proud history but they need something better than this to showcase it. These current premises have no heating, no cooling, we don't have a telephone, we don't have internet, we don't have a toilet. Uta Wilkshire is the local historical society secretary treasurer and she and her society friends struggle to do the city's history justice in their small building in town. Have a jumble. Our collection is no longer nicely displayed so that people come in and, and enjoy it. Mrs Wiltshire says Wodonga's history needs to be shown in style. That means a new museum. She wrote to council and asked for help. They've told her the society will have to fundraise. That means raising somewhere up to a million dollars. You, you just don't have a small community group raising a million dollars. It just doesn't happen. And she has supporters. The one million, mate, yeah. There's no way. How, how would you raise that? You just can't do it. It would be nice if you got something here for sure. Yeah. Something is good for Modonga. Yeah. Eleanor Tabone, Prime 7 News. Prime 7's live and detailed coverage of the North Coast flood disaster early this year has been recognised by the judges of one of the state's most prestigious journalism awards. Our reporter Lucy Langtree and cameraman Rod Smith have won the Paul Lockyer Award for Outstanding Regional Journalism for their coverage of the record-breaking flood that devastated Lismore. The devastation of the March flood event on the Northern Rivers was felt across the state. As the Wilson River rapidly rose, Terrible stories of a looming disaster needed to be told. Prime 7 News reporter Lucy Langtree and cameraman Rod Smith got caught in Lismore's flooded CBD. But with the help of a dedicated Prime 7 editorial and production team, managed to tell the story of Lismore's survival. It was a really heartbreaking time for the entire community. Uh, I really have the utmost respect for the volunteers and the emergency services who worked around the clock to ensure everybody's safety. This coverage earned Prime 7 News the Paul Lockyer Award for Outstanding Regional Broadcast Journalism at the Kennedy Awards announced at the weekend. As the disaster unfolded, additional news services from Tari were added allowing the most up-to-date information to be delivered to the widest possible audience. Thanks to the support of the production team in Canberra and uh, all our editors in Tamworth, we were able to get through and, and produce what I believe was a high-quality news bulletin. Day by day, towns big and small are trying to get back on their feet. The enormity and importance of continued reporting on the struggle is not lost. The stories that we have the privilege of telling each day are so important uh, to the people that live in those regional communities who uh, sometimes are doing it quite tougher than those in the city. So I believe regional news has such an important role to play. Chris Wall, Prime 7 News. And for more brilliant weather reporting, it's time to check in with our meteorologist, Carl Linders. So, Carl, we had a pretty nice morning mm. across our region. It's been a lovely day for the most part. Can you get some cloud now coming through this evening along a upper trough? It's going to bring some rainfall through the region from tomorrow. But 19 degrees at Yarrawonga today, 19 also at Albury. Some of the warmest weather we've had, certainly in about 
four months for the region. Certainly a lovely couple of days. High Cloud is streaming in from the Indian Ocean along an upper trough. It's starting to get its act together with a cold front and producing a big band of rain through bite waters this evening. It will make its way towards our part of the world from around about early morning tomorrow. So light and patchy rain will slowly increase through our part of the world. This time tomorrow should be some steady falls, some heavy falls, particularly around alpine areas along this cold front with some thunderstorms as well. So there is a flood watch out for uh, some parts of northeast New, uh, Victoria. I'll tell you about that in about 20 minutes. Who's on watch, guys? I'll see you soon. An interesting few days ahead. Thanks, Carl. Thank Catch you. you shortly. Still to come in Prime 7 News, tributes for a much-respected local sports identity. And awesome sled dogs tear through the snow in the Alpine country. Stay in touch 24-7 with Prime 7 News. The border sporting community is devastated following the death of the great Les O'Brien. An ex-athlete, the man was known for his cheeky personality and big personality. Born in Wodonga, the legend contributed more than 60 years service to the community. Ovens and Murray Football League General Manager Sean Barrett says it's a big loss. Mr Barrett says the sporting world was very lucky to have him and his smile. One of those local characters with a big smile and a big heart and yeah, something on who the Ovens and Murray will certainly miss. Mr O'Brien passed away on Friday, suffering a heart attack. He was 80 years old. They don't do things by small measures in Alpine country and the annual dinner plane sled dog challenge is proof of that. It's been running for a quarter of a century and developed a massive following. The Dinner Plane Sled Dog Challenge has been running for 24 years and they're the first Australian Alpine resort to have hosted an event like this. It now boasts 70 teams and hundreds of dogs from across the country and New Zealand, weaving through snowy terrain and snow gum lined trails. It attracts only the strongest mushers and fittest dogs, many of which have become mountain regulars. We've been doing the snow races for about six years now um, and regular club dryland races for about nine. The dogs of choice? Malamutes and Huskies, as well as a few Eurohounds as well. While the experienced mushers are a whole different breed of dog lover themselves. We enjoy snow, we enjoy bad weather, we're the only people that teach our dogs to run away from themselves. But one thing is for sure, discipline is never a problem, with racers totally dependent on their furry companions to lead them through tough conditions and potential hazards. Fortunately over, over that time we've had very few problems. The dogs are usually healthy and happy. It's a race that will continue to thrive for years to come. Racing in snow, absolutely fantastic. We all love it. Nothing better than being out on the snow. Josh Rubrich, Prime 7 News. A statewide nutrition program is helping hundreds of families to improve their diet and cut their risk of cancer. With 4% of all cancers preventable with the right diet, the program could save lives. It's an alarming truth. A bad diet can be just as detrimental to your health as smoking. Eating fruit and veggies and um, you know, getting enough exercise, maintaining a healthy weight, we can actually prevent the same amount of um, cancer cases um, as if we're not smoking. That means with the right diet, around 15,000 cases of cancer could be prevented every year, prompting the Cancer Council to call for the community to eat it to beat it. Eat It To Beat It is Cancer Council's nutrition program. Um, we have trained volunteer facilitators um, that go into primary schools. An alarming 93% of adults in New South Wales don't consume enough vegetables. This program aims to change those figures for the next generation. They work with parents of primary school aged children um, to, to teach them about how important fruit and veggie consumption is. With programs being delivered all around the region, volunteers are needed. We do the, the programs throughout the school terms. Um, so we're looking for someone who, or we're looking for, for volunteers who are interested in food and nutrition. Anyone interested in volunteering in the program should contact their local cancer council. Eloise Wilson, Prime 7 News. Still to come in Prime 7 News, bad news for the Thunder, whose season has run out of steam. That's next. And the Raiders topple the Pigeons in an O&M's thriller.
The Raiders have taken a big step forward towards a top three finish with a thrilling win over Yarrawonga in one of the games of the year. Pigeon star Mark Wiley had a shot on the siren to win the game but missed. The Raiders winning by four points. He's been the hero for Yarrawonga on many occasions this year and after drawing this free kick, Mark Wiley had the chance to drag his team over the line with every footy player's dream, a kick in the dying seconds to win the game. But with Yarra's top three hopes weighing on his shoulders, Wiley missed handing the Raiders one of their most memorable wins in years. There was a top three spot riding on this game and both teams played like their season depended on it. Take a look at some of these collisions all in the last quarter. Although Wiley missed the match winner, it was his efforts in the final term that got the Pigeons back in it. This snap from the former AFL midfielder put the home side in front with 10 minutes to go. But the Raiders responded, first with this running goal, then another from Ethan Boxall after he caught Morris medalist Tyler Bonnet with the footy. There would be another twist in the tail though, with just two minutes to go, big man Brandon Symes kicked his fourth, putting the Pigeons within striking distance. Oh. But it was to be the Raiders' day, while his miss not only handed the Raiders the win, but it now has them well placed to snare a top three finish. The win also marked Mark Doolan's 200th game. The Raiders have now won seven of their last eight. In the weekend's other results, an Albury's Braden O'Hara looks to be getting back to his best footy after a calf injury threatened to derail his season. He kicked three goals in the opening term to set up the win as Albury continue their domination over Lavington, winning by 46 points. While Wodonga kept their slim finals hopes alive after a comfortable win over Corora Rutherglen. Brett Doswell kicked six majors, the Dogs winning by 11 goals. Fletcher Doherty, Prime 7 News. And from Myrtleford tonight, confirmation that local star Brad Murray has announced this season will be his last. Murray told his teammates following Myrtleford's win over the Rovers on Saturday that after 18 years he'll be hanging up the boots. The 35-year-old has played 314 games with a number of different clubs, 162 with the Saints. His final game will be at home when Myrtleford host Albury in a fortnight. Lamington has taken another big step towards the netball minor premiership with a big win over fellow finals hopefuls Albury. Albury had one of their best wins in years last week when they upset reigning premiers Yarrawonga. But they were brought crashing back down to earth by the Panthers. Sarah Sanini led the charge again with 25 goals, Lamington winning 59 to 35. While across town, Corowa Rutherglen were too good for Wodonga, winning by 23 points. Albury Thunder's roller coaster year has come to a disappointing end. The Thunder needed a win to claim an unlikely spot in the Group 9 finals, but injuries finally took their toll on the border side, losing to Wagga by eight points. It's been one of Albury's toughest seasons in years, both on and off the field. But despite hurdle after hurdle, the Thunder still found themselves in the finals hunt. A win would see them finish fifth. A loss would end their year and they looked finals bound when they found themselves 10 points in front early in the piece. But ironically, it was former Albury coach Ben Jeffrey who turned the tide for his new team. The Kangaroos hopped away with the win and the finals berth. Albury finished the home and away season a disappointing seventh. In local soccer and Albury United are still in the league title race after a gutsy win over the Hotspurs. United had a number of players out or hampered by injury and illness, yet still managed to get the job done, winning 3-1. It was an emotional day for the Greens, who paid tribute to Les O'Brien, a legend of the club, who passed away Friday night. The win keeps them within striking distance of Murderford, who were three points clear atop the table. While Wodonga Diamonds finals hopes took a major blow, losing 1-0 to Melrose. Fletcher Doherty, Prime 7 News. Well, rain is expected to develop again tomorrow. Carl has the latest local weather for us in just a moment.
for a closer look at the weather forecast. We're joined once again by Carl Linders. So Carl, we've got some rain that's moving in. Are we expecting much from that? Yeah, good drop of rain on the way, guys, but not much snow with this first band. Hello, everybody. So here's this rain band tomorrow. It's going to be really starting to ramp up across our part of the world from 4 p.m. tomorrow. A cold front will pick it up and bring the rainfall through Wednesday night. Thursday, we'll start to see a southwest to westerly wind regime develop. So along alpine areas on the western and northern slopes of the Great Dividing Range, particularly in Victoria and southeast New South Wales, the rain will be quite continuous till around Friday. We do have a, quite a strong cold front aligned southwest of Adelaide on Friday. It bursts through and southerly winds will dry out the atmosphere. So the showers will decrease, but the snowfalls will increase. Further systems next week look inter interesting. We've got a big barrelling low pressure system coming through. So mobile weather pattern is uh, unfolding across our part of the world. Quite significant rainfall, as you can see. Falls upwards of around 100 millimetres has prompted a flood watch for parts of the Murray uh, River Basin system, including the Kewa Valley, the Ovens, Ovens River catchments, the Severn and Castle Creek catchments. So a lot of rainfall is expected, particularly towards Beechworth and up towards the Alpine peaks. Temperatures in the positive range will see falls of 100 millimetres of rain accumulate over the next 48 hours as you can see continuous rainfall up and down the alpine peaks showers further west and that rainfall will again ramp up on thursday with thunderstorms developing with colder air filtering in late in the day in southern parts of our district and areas of rain will persist and snowfalls will develop finally to 1000 meters it will help to repair that snow melt through the next couple of days we're looking at around uh, 15 millimeters through both thursday and friday showers and windy through the weekend with the windy weather next week but guys the good news is after the snow melt what about a half a meter of snow is expected to fall oh, so that's really good to hear there's a lot <laughs> yeah. of happy skiers out there yes, yeah. so much rain coming through yes. we're going to have to watch those rivers aren't yeah, we, we will yeah, be. See you soon. be interesting thanks, thanks carl see you tomorrow and that's all we have time for tonight you can join the debate on tonight's stories on facebook and watch tonight's top stories on our website thanks for watching coming up seven years from melbourne have a great night we'll see you again tomorrow